Don't forget Sunday mornings we're teaching on the church and her mission. So be here for that. And then Sunday nights is um, prayer. Get ready to change that just a little bit. The Lord's talking to me today about now just maybe teaching for 15, 20 minutes on prayer. Or along the lines of faith and prayer. And then praying instead of just hopping in. So I told you he probably would tweak it as we went. So uh, next month, uh, the second Sunday night, yeah, that's the 12th, will be our communion and healing rally. So we'll be praying for the sick on that Sunday night. So make sure you're aware of that and invite people. Uh, we're getting ready to uh, <coughs> order handkerchiefs. Uh, we're going to just keep handkerchiefs around um, and um, so we can have those prayer cloths. Amen. God brought special miracles by the hands of Paul. And as much as aprons and handkerchiefs went from him and laid on the sick, the healed the diseases, and the evil spirits went out of them. Hallelujah. We thank God for the word and for the power of God. Amen. Let's look here in Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1 through 6. In your Bible, I won't tell you what page it's on because you, everybody has different Bibles. By different printers with uh, different page numbers. So you can even have the same, uh, like a Kenneth Hagin Bible or a Copeland Bible. And different editions may be different because of the way they, they reprinted them or whatever. So, hallelujah. Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen. For by it the elders obtained a good report. Through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God so that the things which uh, are seen, things which are seen, were not made of things which do appear. Now, I just love that. Uh, evolutionists say that there was this big cosmos and there was this big explosion and there was this big this, this electronic spark with enough of the right elements together at the same time which sparked life. And that life, that single cellular micro cell of life has evolved into everything you see today. Scientists are some of the biggest faith people I've ever seen. Anyway, to believe that. Be able, to be able to believe that all that happened from that. And they say, well, we, we, we've created life in the test tube. You know, in the laboratory, we, you know, we did this. Yeah, intelligence did that, not chance. You put everything you knew it took to create that and gave it the right electrical charge to do what you, you know. It still took intelligence, not happen chance. All right. But we know, we know God created it. God created, you know, we're not, we're not the evolution of a single cell protoplasm or amoebas or whatever. We are created in the image of God by the hand of God. Humanity was. Hallelujah. All right. So through faith, we, through faith we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God. So that things which were, are seen were not made of things which do appear. How do we understand that? By faith. You can't understand it by reason. You can't understand it by reason. By faith, Abel offered a more, God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain, by which he obtained witness that he was righteous. God testifying of his gifts, and by, and, and by it he being dead, yet speaketh. By faith, Enoch was translated that he should not see death and was not found because God had translated him. For before his translation, he had this testimony that he pleased God. But, everybody say, but, without faith, it is impossible. What is it? Feasible? Comprehensible? It is impossible to please God. For they that cometh to God, please him, for they that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Praise the Lord. So our foundation text is we're teaching on the fundamentals or the ABCs of faith. And uh, we've already covered a few points here. Uh, last week we didn't quite finish up, so I need, I need to cover up something before we get into I know I, know I post on the internet, I'm teaching on faith versus hope. But um, really, we've got to finish up with something from last week. Um, you now, the Word of God, and we've, we've quoted these and read these, you know, um, there's, there's four different scriptures, one from Habakkuk, then in Romans, and I believe uh, Galatians, and, and, and since I don't have my other sheet that got somehow misplaced, um, here, it's just not here, hallelujah, uh, it says the just shall live by faith, or the just shall live by his faith. 
It's, it's, you know, the, form, if, uh, the phraseology is extremely similar. Um, it's just saying that the just shall live by faith. Back, actually, in chapter 10, verse 38, it says, Now the just shall live by faith. Hallelujah. And uh, we find companion scriptures of that in Romans 1.17, Galatians 3.11. Then Habakkuk um, has the other uh, verse. And that's the Old Testament one, the just shall live by faith. We walk by faith. I believe Romans uh, says, for we walk by faith and not by sight. I understand when the word, when we walk by faith, it's not determining, you know, your actual physical walking. It's talking about living by, you know, um, the, 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 the walk you're on, the journey you're on, the, uh, is, is, is by faith. So, we, so our lifestyle is that of faith and not by sight. Now listen, not by sight meaning <clears throat> we cannot live our life and make our decisions and do things based on what we see. I, I, I was thinking about this the, just the other night. Um, over the time that we've been here in Greensboro, I've passed up marvelous opportunities to quit. I've just have had marvelous opportunities to throw in the towel. You just, you know, uh, just had one recently. I was ready to throw in the towel. You know, just passed it up. You know, from the outside looking at it, you say there's that, that, that's just not good. It's, it's bad. That's a bad circumstance. That, that could be, um, you know, if you got to talking in the natural, that could be the death blow. That could be the nail in the coffin. That could be the end of everything. But you can't walk by what you see. You can't let the circumstances govern your thinking. You can't let what's going on around you determine how you respond. We don't respond to circumstances based on what they are. We respond to circumstances based on what the Word of God says. Amen. Now, <clears throat> the doctor, you know, if you go to the doctor, he says you've you got six months to live, you can respond to that about a circumstance, say, oh, God, I'm dead, and go home and start making all your plans to die. Or you can respond out of faith, out of the Word of God, that says, I'll live and not die, and declare the works of the Lord. I am, he, Jesus said, in his word, that I'm the healed of the Lord. By his stripes I was healed. So, you know, with long life he'll satisfy me and show me his salvation. Glory to God. Amen? You know, uh, and start quoting what the word says. You know, you've got to respond out of faith. See, faith responds out of what God's word says about a circumstance, not what the circumstance says about the circumstance. And listen, we all going to get, you know, we all deal with bad circumstances occasionally. Everybody in this room deals with bad circumstances. Hello? And, you know, you just, you just, like Brother Hagin used to say, he passes, he, he's had marvelous opportunities to get sick. He would just pass them up. I've had, you know, we've all had marvelous opportunities to succumb to circumstances. Well, just pass them up. Amen. Amen. Just pass them up. Choose not to give in to them. Amen. I said amen. Say what the word says when the circumstances of life come against you. Glory to God. Well, what if I don't know what it says? Go find out. That's, that's the thing is, you know, um, I'll be honest with you. I, I think probably everybody in this room, if I ask you this, you could probably raise your hand. How many of you have ever had a time in your life where your feet ended up right where your head was just a few seconds before? I'm figuratively speaking. Bad things came. Knocked your feet right out from under you. And I mean, you know, you're just sitting there and you're thinking, my God, my God. You're like, you know, the nationwide commercial. You're in the car. But the guy saved your coffee. The, you know. Hey, it's, a bad, you know, it's a good day, it's a bad day. You know, the good thing is we saved the coffee, you know. Uh, you know, when bad things come and, 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 and difficult circumstances come, uh, you have a choice. You have a choice as to whether or not you're going to let the circumstance dictate the outcome of your destiny or not. Or are you going to let the Word of God dictate it? And see, have faith in God, have faith in His Word. What does His Word say? Amen? You know, I don't have a care in this world. I don't have a care. Why? Because I've cast all my cares on the Lord. God's my source. God's my supply. God meets my need. Amen? Oh, uh, yeah, but, you know, this is a bad circumstance. I can't help what the circumstance is. God's true. You know? And, and we've just got to get to the place that, you know, that um, we, we, we have such confidence in the Word of God that it's true. Amen? Um, now listen, it's not Christian Science. Now Christian Science is a um, is, is a um, group 
that is, is based on what we, well, a lot of people refer to as modern-day Gnosticism. In other words, the, 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 the denial of things. Now, look, I'm going to tell you something. Um, if um, you know, the doctor tells you, you know, that you got six months to live, you got cancer, you don't go around and say, I don't have cancer, I don't have cancer. That's not, that's not faith. It's not faith to deny something. It's faith to say what God's Word says about it. I believe. Amen. What did Jesus say? Remember, we quoted Mark eleven twenty three. 23, read Mark eleven twenty three. 23. Look over, you can look over there again. Mark eleven twenty four, twenty three 23 and 24. Just turn over there in your Bible. Right, look right in your Bible. Don't take my word for it. Don't ever take my word for it. Don't ever take any preacher's word for it. It's what does the word say? Because you know what? Uh, the preacher could be wrong, but the word, the word can't be. I said the word can't be. People can have opinions. And opinions come and go. Are you here? But in Mark 11, we, we read the story of how that, you know, Jesus cursed the fig tree and said, no man eat fruit of thee hereafter forever. And the disciples heard it on the morrow as they passed by, uh, seeing the fig tree withered, dried up from the roots. Peter called and remembered, said, Master, behold, the fig tree which thou cursed is withered away. And Jesus answered and saith unto him, have faith in God. Yeah. Or have the God kind of faith. For verily, oh, that's a solemn oath, I say unto you that whosoever... Is, how many, if you're a whosoever, raise your hand. And if you don't know us, anybody that whosoever. I mean, whosoever, all right, shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed, and be thou cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that the things that he saith shall come to pass. He'll have whatsoever he saith. So whosoever gets whatsoever he saith if he believes it in his heart. Therefore, I say unto you, what things soever ye desire. Let me say this. Desire is the, is, the, is the basis of hope. Desire is the basis of hope. You desire something. You look into the Word and you might see something and there's a desire to have that. But faith lays hold of it. It just doesn't hope it's so. You know. You ever heard people say this? I'm just a hoping and a praying? Well, you're not going to get it, hoping and a praying. You've got to move out of hope into faith. And the only way to get out of hope in the faith is to get what the Word says on it and believe what the Word says. Okay? And we're going to get into that tonight in a little while. All right? <clears throat> Therefore, I say unto you, what things forever you desire when you pray, believe that you receive them, and you shall have them. It didn't say deny what you got. It didn't say deny what you got. It said, it said, it said believe you receive the answer. If, if, if the, you, there's disease in your body, you don't go around saying, ah, I'm not sick, I'm not sick, I'm not sick. That's, that's Christian science. That's denial. Now, what does faith do? Faith says, the Word of God says, by his stripes I was healed. I believe that I received my healing. In Jesus' name, according to 1 Peter 2, 24, I, um, Psalm 103, verses 2 and 3, Matthew, I mean, Isaiah chapter 53, verses 4, 5, and 6. Amen. Matthew 8, 17. I believe that I receive my healing in Jesus' name. And Jesus said, ye shall have. I don't, I don't talk about not what I, what, what's not. See, that's a negative. You're operating on a negative, what, what we refer to as not logic. Uh, it's a computer programmer. We, I used to program in a language called RPG-2. Now, it's RPG-400 now for the AS-400s. Uh, but back then, it was RPG-2 on the System 3. And they had, what they, you could use a, a not in front of a command, and they call it not logic. And, and you, they said, don't use too many of them, you'll get, you'll get it all messed up. It'll get all convoluted, and you'll say, if this condition is here, and not, and not that condition there, and with this condition, but not that condition, it could get all mixed up. And so they took, you know, and not, you can't use not logic in faith. In other words, not logic in faith is denial of what is there instead of acceptance of what God says. God makes a reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Remember we read that last week in Romans chapter 4. God, who, who, who we believed in God, who makes reference to things that do not exist, Romans 4, 16 or so, who makes reference to things that do not exist out of the Weymouth. I'm sorry, I'm, quote, I'm quoting different. Who makes reference to things that do not exist as though they did. Who makes reference to things that, that do not exist as though they did. So we're not denying circumstances. And see, a lot of Christians get into that, and they think they're in faith, and what they're in, they're, they're denying. You know, that's not, I'm not impelled on a two by four through my, through my midsection. That's not real. Come on now. That's, you know, you know, 
I believe I receive my, I'll, I'll live and not die. I'll declare the works of the Lord. You know, the son of righteousness arises uh, with healing in his wings. Amen. My healing springs forth speedily. You confess what the word says, not deny what reality say or, or circumstances are dictating. There's a big difference between the two. They may sound close. And you may think somebody is saying, saying one thing is in faith, and they're not. They're, they're in denial. We don't live in denial. Yet, the dead is Sarah's womb. Sarah's womb was dead. Abraham is 100 years old. She still gets pregnant because he believed. Amen? He believed what God's word says. Now, real faith. Now, this, let me say this. If God says it's so, it's so. Look at Romans 10, 17. If God says it so, it's so. And this is, a, this is a, something you have to understand by faith and understand as a Christian. Either the Bible and the promises in the Word of God are God's Word, or they're not. I know, I know lately there's been this, this stuff on Facebook coming mostly out of Africa and uh, in India and some European countries. Um, about the Bible's not really God's word. We have the Holy Spirit in us, and whatever he teaches us, that's what we need to live in. And all the, I don't need a Bible and all this kind of crazy stuff. And they'll use the argument, what about illiterate people? Give them, give them the whole word. You don't, you don't go give them your, your Holy Spirit opinion. I'm not mocking the Holy Ghost, because it's really not the Holy Ghost. It's not really the Holy Spirit doing that. The word and the Spirit agree. And see, so he'll never say things that are contrary to the written word. <laughs> Amen. So, but if God says it's so, it's so. Romans 10, 17 says, faith cometh, so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. In other words, you hear a message, but the message you hear comes from the word of God. If you want faith for something that has the power to transform it or to change it, it comes from the Word. Look over in, um, <clears throat> I believe, 2 Corinthians chapter 4. And, and it may be 1 Corinthians chapter 4. We may have to go back. But I'm okay with going back and changing around. It's not my notes. That's why I say I'm not sure. But it's 2 Corinthians chapter 4. Ah, boy, we would just let's be, get on up in here and uh, <laughs> we'll just start in verse one. It's a good chapter. Amen. Word of God's good. Amen. Amen. Therefore, seeing we have this ministry, as we have received mercy, we faint not, but have renounced the hidden things of dishonesty, not walking in craftiness, nor handling the word of God deceitfully. But by now, what, what word of God could Paul have been talking about? As some people say, some of the stupid things they say. Uh, but by manifestation of the truth, commending ourselves to every man's conscience in the sight of God. But if our gospel be hid, it is hid to them that are lost, in whom the God of this world, that's Satan, hath blinded the minds of them that believe not, lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. For we preach not ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord, and ourselves your servants for Jesus' sake. For God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellency of the power may be of God and not of us. We are troubled on every side, yet not distressed. We are perplexed, but not in despair. Persecuted, but not forsaken. Cast down, but not destroyed. Amen? Um. I think one place Paul said, knock down, but not knocked out. And I think it may be this passage, is this verse. Yeah, uh, different translation says, knock down, but not knocked out. I'm rocky. Hey, bring it on, devil. Adrian. All right, anyway. <laughs> Hallelujah. Just had those moments I had to do my movie thing. You know, at home, every time, I, you know, every time there's something going on, uh, something will happen, I'll sing a song that goes along with what just happened in the house. It keeps my wife laughing. <clears throat> so, knock down, but not knocked out. Amen. Hallelujah. What happens if you're not knocked out? You can get back up. Yeah. You can go back into the fight. Amen. 
always bearing about in, in the body the dying of the Lord Jesus Christ, that the life of Jesus may be manifest in our body. For we which live are always delivered unto death for Jesus' sake, and the life also of Jesus might be manifest in our flesh. So then death worketh in us, but life in you know, He's saying that they're always facing death for preaching the gospel. Okay, As King James sometimes gets a little whatever with the flowery, rhythmic patterns, but um, he's just basically saying that we're, we're constantly facing death for your sake to get the gospel out. Okay? We, I love verse 13, we, having the same spirit of faith, according as it is written. Well, where was it written? In the Old Testament. That was the basis by which they preached the gospel message. They used the Old Testament to preach from. Isn't that amazing? Somebody said recently that they didn't have a Bible. Well, what, were they, what was he quoting? Yeah. <laughs> uh, listen, the same spirit of faith, according as it is written, I believe and therefore have I spoken. We also believe. And therefore speak. So Paul says the spirit of faith is you believe it and you make a declaration of it. Amen. See, faith believes something. What does it believe? It, well, let's go on down here and let's find out. Knowing, I'm sorry, remember what we said in Romans 10, 17? So, so then faith cometh by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Amen. Believing is the verb form of the word for faith. All right? To believe. Faith. You got faith in something. Faith in the word of God. When you believe it, with the spirit of faith is I believe. I believe God's word. I believe, say, I believe God's word. See, when we believe God's word, praise God. We make a declaration. We don't deny things. We just go find a higher power. Now, let me, let me know this. Um, you could go up to the top of the building, of this building right here, and jump off and say, there's no such thing as gravity. There's no such thing as gravity. There's no such thing as gravity. No such thing as gravity. And you probably won't be able to say it that many times. But somewhere there, you'll be going, there's no such thing as splat. You'll come in contact with the ground. Why? Because the law of gravity is an operation. But you can supersede the law of gravity, not by that, but by, in, by grabbing hold of another law. What law? The law of faith. Now, I'm, 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 talking, I'm, I'm using parallels here. The law that supersedes gravity is the law of thrust and lift. You put a, a, you put a fixed wing aircraft on a runway, you put enough thrust on that fixed wing aircraft, and then the air flowing over the wings, and I don't know if you know this or not, the air flowing over the wings starts to go over the wings and creates over top of the wing a low pressure system over each wing. And the wing begins to lift up into that low pressure system. So as the air as the air flows over the wing and goes up like this, it creates a low-pressure system right over top of the wing, and the wing lifts up into the low-pressure system, the low pressure. And that's where the lift comes from. The thrust puts enough air over the wing to get it to spoil, sp spill over and create the, the hump effect over top where the low pressure is and the wing lift up into it. You get the law of thrust and lift. And what do you do? You supersede the law of gravity. What happens if the engine, if the thrust stops? Splat. Okay? Think of this, think of that same way. Circumstances are like gravity. This, they're there. But you can supersede those circumstances through the law of faith. Amen? Amen? And although there's circumstances they're trying to pull, just like gravity is trying to pull on that plane, and gravity is trying to whatever, and it's going to pull you down, the thrust, as long as you've got the thrust and lift, you win. You go exactly where you want to go. And there may be contrary circumstances to everything you want, desire, in life, or, or what's going on around you, but I am telling you the law of faith will supersede that. Amen. I said amen. So I don't deny when I get in the plane that gravity is there. We just, we just access or uh, appropriate a, a higher law. I don't deny the circumstances are there. I appropriate a higher law, the law of faith. And actually, Paul calls it the law of faith. Did y'all know that? He refers to it as the law of faith. You can find that, Larry, somewhere. Okay. So, the spirit of faith, 2 Corinthians chapter 4, verse 13, is, I believe, therefore I speak. What are you speaking? 
You're speaking what you believe. What do I believe? Where does where my faith that what I believe comes from? So then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Where is boasting then? It is excluded by what law of works? Nay, but by the law of faith. That's Romans 3.27. So there, the, Paul refers to the law of faith. There is a law of faith. There's a law of circumstances. They're out there. I'm not denying them. We're just accessing and appropriating a higher law. Amen? I'm putting into force by what I say the higher law. And the higher law supersedes the lower law. Glory to God. Hallelujah. They may say, you know, uh, that, that old song you used to have back in the 50s and you, had, and you played it backwards on the flip side. They're coming to take me away, ha ha, to the funny form of my life. It's sweet, ha ha ha. Anybody remember that song? If you turned it over on the 45, the backside, it was played backwards. It's really weird. Anyway. Did you not ever hear that song? Y'all missed half your life. All right. <laughs> not really. I bet, I bet that's on YouTube or something somewhere. All right. So the law, the, 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 the spirit of faith, believe something and makes that declaration. But if you're going to, you know, listen, let's go on down here. Knowing that he which raised up the Lord Jesus shall raise us up also by Jesus and present you with him for all things are for your sake, that the abundant grace might through the thanksgiving of many redound to the glory of God. For which cause we faint not, that though our outward man perisheth or, or waxes old, yet the inward man is renewed day by day. For our light affliction, you think about what Paul went through. He was beat three times, three, three different occasions. He was beat 40 lashes, save one. That's 39. That was a Roman scourging. And we, how, many, how many of y'all saw the passion of the Christ? Okay. That was a Roman scourging. Three times Paul went through that. Three times I received 40 stripes, save one. Night and day in the deep. And fastings often, I mean, he gets over, I forget which chapter, where it is. He, but he gives his whole list of all things he went through. And he says, for our light affliction. <laughs> wow, I'm telling you, I like, he, I like that guy. He goes to that and comes out and says, that's a light affliction. Which is but for a moment. Worketh for us a far more exceeding and eternal way to glory. While we look not, here's the key. It's not denial. It's while we look not at the things which are seen, but at the things which are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal. Now, the word temporal means changeable or subject to change. Whatever circumstance you're facing is temporal. It's subject to change. There is nothing you are facing that is, there's no way out. <coughs> it is subject to change. Um, we have, we, now we've had him here in our church, and um, he, he comes into town occasionally, but Randy Greer was a lifetime criminal. And finally, the last time they arrested him and put him in jail, uh, they, they, he was kind of like on the three strikes you're out thing. Said you, his, his thing said, you are eligible for parole in the year zero. Hello. Your next parole hearing is in the year, in other words, the year zero. He got saved, born again, filled with the Holy Ghost, got turned on to the Word of God, started confessing, I'm going out of here. I'm coming out of here. I'm coming out of here. He would tell the guards, I'm, I'm walking out those doors one day, a free man. Amen. Hallelujah. He did. Went to Ramah. Now preaches. Can't ever have an airplane plane. You can't ever have an aircraft license if you're out on, if you're a um, criminal, if you've had a uh, um, felony. He's got a private pilot's license. That governor gave him a complete, not just a pardon. They exonerated his record. Think of the other word you use for that. It sponged, sponged him. He's got, his, he's got his pilot's license. He went from never getting out, but he got a hold of the word. Now he, did, he didn't say, I'm not in jail. I'm not in jail. I'm not in jail. I'm walking out those doors. <laughs> Hallelujah. I'm walking out those doors. While we look not at the things which are seen, because they're changeable. That, that, that piece of paper said, you ain't ever getting out of here. But the word of God. Faith in the word. 
got him out. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. Brother Hagen, they said back in the 70s, there was a guy that came to Rama that um, he had killed a police officer in a drunken rage. Didn't know the identity was drunk, but he was life without parole. He got a hold of the word of God. He began to speak the word of God. He didn't say he wasn't going around, I'm not in jail, I'm not in jail, I'm not in jail. He just starts saying, speaking the word. Starts speaking his faith. Making a declaration of faith. And he walked out, full pardon, came to Ramah, he's out preaching. Glory to God. Amen? Now, so we look not at the things which are seen. Now, that's, that's not denial. We're just, we're just, hello? But at the things which are, uh, are not seen. For the things which are seen are temporal, but the things which are not seen are eternal. What is, it, what is this eternity thing we're talking about, the word? Forever, O Lord, thy word is settled in heaven. Amen? The word of God doesn't change. <laughs> oh, glory to God. I know people come along and they say, well, you know, that passed away. You know, God's word didn't change. One person said, God don't heal anymore. You know, those things have passed away. Has faith passed away? I said, has faith passed away? No. Faith is still here. I said, faith is still here. Come on now, faith is still here. Amen. The spirit of faith doesn't have to, it, 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 the circumstances can show up, and it doesn't look at it, it looks at what's, it's what's eternal, God's word. It says, the, the, the Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. My God meets my need. Glory to God. My God meets my need according to his riches and glory by Christ Jesus. God is my source. Amen? Hallelujah. And so, um, real faith comes out of the word of God. The spirit of faith believes God's word and speaks it. God's word's alive. Amen? You know, I, I've, I've heard um, a lot of, uh, some of the things Dad says about different people, uh, Dad Hagen, uh, about uh, trying to convince people what you know to get, you know, they could be healed or receive their healing, and they just. But if you could ever get them to see it in the Word, a lot of people just as soon as they saw it, oh, yep, that, that's what the Word says. Lay your hands on me, I'll be healed. Yeah. It didn't take long. As soon as you saw that the Word said it, it didn't take long. Too often we. Stand things with our head instead of taking it by faith. If the words, just, just God said it, that's it, that settles it. I said God said it, that settles it. Yeah. Glory to God. Because somebody say amen. amen. God said it, that settles it as a fact in heaven, but it becomes a reality to us when we lay hold of it by faith and declare it and say it because we believe it. We have the same spirit of faith. We believe, therefore, speak. What we believe. Oh, my, 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 my. How chances may say you're going to go under. Ever, ever felt like that? Some people say sink or swim, live or die, go over, go under. I'm going to hold fast to God, and you feel like you're doing them all. Like one guy said one time, when you're going through hell, don't stop. <laughs> Some Christians stop, get out, set up the picnic table, have dinner, whine and fuss about how tough it is. Uh, just don't, don't stop. Don't stop. Amen? So, faith comes. If faith comes from the Word, then that, there is... at an adverse circumstance and when, you got to know what God's word says about what he says about it. Amen. I hear people pray sometimes, you know, oh God, heal them if it's your will. Then that tells me right then, they don't know what the word of God says. Because if you get into the word and see what the word says, now what do they believe? They believe what they've been taught. They haven't found out for themselves. You can't, you can't, it, it amazes me that you, people believe certain things that just aren't in the Word, as if they were. Now, <laughs> my grandmama used to I mean, godliness. I heard that growing up. And when I first got saved and came to the Lord, 
Somebody wanted to know where that was in the Bible. So I got my Strong's Concordance out. Now, now, thank God it's all on electronic, and you can look it up in about two seconds flat. But back then, you, it was, the Strong's was about this big, about that wide, and about that thick. And it could take you days, especially if what you're looking for ain't in there. <laughs> I got desperate. Cleanliness is next to godliness. There are pages where he just lists the references to all the. I mean, he said exhaustive concordance. The man wasn't kidding. It's like double overkill. And I was looking for cleanliness as next to godliness. Now, at the same time, I was trying to find that other scripture that the Lord helps those who help themselves. Uh-huh. I got desperate in that one looking through the word the. Because the Lord. But I couldn't find it in any of those words references in the Strong's Concordance. I finally found out neither verse was in the Bible. But I'm telling you. What's that, Bill? First opinion, that's right. It's in the book of first opinions. <laughs> yeah, first and second opinions. Yeah, there's a lot of scriptures in those books. Um, I finally found out. I'd heard it all my life. Boy, I, 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 because I've been taught up by grandmama. It's in the Bible. It ain't in the Bible. Hey, the Bible. Line up with the Bible. The Lord helped those who couldn't help themselves. We were all lost. We were all on our way to hell. And nobody can redeem themselves. Now, there's another side to that. You know, the, he doesn't work, doesn't eat, you know. I mean, it don't mean you can just, you know, you get saved and go lay on there and somebody feeds you cherries and grapes and fans you all day long while you look at, turn into Jabba the Hut. Okay? That's not what it's talking about. All right? The Lord helps those who help themselves, and cleanliness is next to godliness are not Bible verses. But I sure thought they were. Lord, now you say, I, I mean, you can scrub your skin off. I want to be close to you. Scrub, 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 scrub. Till you bleed. And there's no faith for it because it's not Bible. You have to know not what Grandma said. Let me say this. Even if it is in the Bible and Grandma said it, that's not good enough. You have to know. That's why this is the year of the Bible. You have to know. That it's in the Word. You need to see it in the Word. You need to take the Bible and study it and look at it. Amen. Joshua 1 8, that's the that's the uh, right after Deuteronomy, it's the sixth book of the New Testament of the Old Testament. Because it's right after Mo the five books of Moses. So Joshua 1 8 says, This book of the law shall not depart out of your mouth. Now, understand when, when Joshua wrote this, the books that they had for canon were the five books of Moses. And, believe it or not, the book of Job. Because Job is the oldest book in the Bible. It was written before anything else. Chronologically. It's not, it's not in the Bible at the first, unless you've got a chronological Bible. Okay. So we can say this, if the book of the law is the five books of Moses, and that's the word of God, you can read it this way, New Testament theology would say, the, the word of God shall not depart out of your mouth. But you'll meditate therein day, I'm not going to really get to faith and hope tonight, guys, so sorry, I'll have to, I'll have to put in a denim on the internet. Um, Thou shalt meditate therein day and night. That doesn't mean you walk around 24 hours, you know, 24-7, you know, the Word of God says, the Word of God says, the Word of God says. What? No, 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 no. It's, just, it's constantly before you. It's, it, it's ever before you. Okay? You, you can't, you, you got to sleep. You got to eat. If you got children, you got to talk to your kids. If you got a wife, you better talk to her. If you know what's good for you. Amen. Anybody here? Go home. 
So you better talk. I mean, if you know what's good for you, you better have some time with your wife. You better talk to your husband, ladies. Amen. Okay? It's talking about being in a constant state of, or, or a consistent state of being aware of the Word of God. In other words, it's, it's, it's on your mind. It's, just, it's back there somewhere. You know, you can always have something on your mind. How many, how many of you have stuff on your mind when other things are going on? You can, you can always have the Word of God there. Amen? Thou shalt meditate. Now, the word meditate comes from a Hebrew word that actually means to mutter. What's muttering? You've muttered before. Everybody in this room's muttered before, unless you're a deaf mute. Isn't that right? You walked off from something and you talk. You, what's that? Talking to yourself. Muttering. You ever gone to the to the uh, to a fast food drive through or something, or go, went in to the went in and ordered something, and they and the, you know the service is bad, and you're you're talking to yourself. This is the worst service I've ever seen. You're muttering. Are you here? Of course, usually you go. They say, "Is everything okay?" Oh, it's, it's fine. I'll tell you right now, you never come back here again. You're muttering. You're speaking to yourself. The word of God says to speak the word of God to yourself. This is not me getting some t- you know, transcendental meditation, cross leg, hum, incense burning. Med- that's not what meditate means. It means to mutter. It means to speak it. Speak the word of God to yourself. Amen. Thou shalt mutter there in day and night. That thou, listen, why? That thou mayest, or that, so that you may observe to do according to all that's written therein. For then thou shalt make thy way prosperous, and then thou shalt have good success. Now, the, word, the phrase good success also means you will deal wisely in the affairs of life. The word of God will cause you to walk in wisdom, Deal wisely by by muttering and meditating in it. You will observe to do it. How do we observe to do it? We walk by faith. We make declarations and we live according to what the word says, not circumstances or situations, uh, bad events, people. We stay with the word. Amen. And the whole counsel of the word, not your little uh, stinking private interpretation of it. Sorry. You know? Well, I, I, I know the Bible says this, but the Lord showed me, and it's always, I don't have to do it. No, 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 no. You have to do the whole counsel of the Word of God. Amen. It's the whole, it's the full counsel and weight of the Word that we live by. That's the life of faith. Why? Because we believe, therefore we speak. The spirit of faith is we believe, therefore we speak. If the word says it, that's what we believe and speak and act on. Now, what if I don't believe it? You keep muttering until, and, and, you know, and listen, I'm going to be honest with you. You need to spend more time in the word so that it, you know, that it, it infiltrates your being. Receive with meekness. James chapter 1. Verse 20 something or other. I think 22. I just turn over James 1. Go on. Turn, I don't hear pages. Come on. Pages, pages, pages. Want to hear him? James 1, verse 21 and 22, and 23, and 24. Even down to verse 25. Y'all, are you on James 1 yet? Wherefore, lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word, which is able to save your souls. Now, let me say something here. James is writing according to the first chapter and the first verse to the 12 tribes which are scattered abroad greeting. He's talking to Christians. So he's not talking about getting born again by receiving the engrafted word. The word soul here is suke, not pneuma. Pneuma is your spirit. It's the word for spirit, the Greek word for spirit. The Greek word here for uh, soul is suke, which is the soul of man, the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions, not the spirit of man. The spirit of man is referred to as, as your pneuma, 
which is also translated breath and wind and spirit. Okay? Um, and when referring to the Holy Spirit, the, the Gaelic in the uh, King James translation court translated it ghost. The Holy Numa, the Holy Ghost. They just, because they were so superstitious. Okay? So wherefore lay apart all filthiness and superfluity of naughtiness and receive with meekness the engrafted word which is able to save, to restore, to make whole. Remember, it's sozo here. Sozo. So it's, it's not talking about salvation of your spirit coming out of the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of God's dear son. It is talking about restoring the suke, the mind, the will, the intellect, the emotions. The word of God will change the way you think. Let me say this. Changing the way you think won't save you. But after you saved, you need to change the way you think. And the thing that changes the way you think is the word of God. Salvation, being born again, being born again is not changing how you think. It is experiencing the new birth by the spirit of God. For by one spirit are we all baptized in the one body. Okay? You're born again. Jesus said, except man be born again, he shall not see the kingdom of heaven. But after you're born again, your mind needs to be changed. The way you think. Why? Well, it's been trained to think the wrong way. He's been trained to think the wrong way. So how do we now think? We think by receiving the word of God according to what the word says. We respond according to how the word says it. We, recon we respond according to what God's word says about a circumstance. Not what we think about it, but what does the word say about it? And the word of God, when you receive with meekness the ingratitude, well, how do you receive that? You meditate in it, you mutter it, you speak it. So it's able to sozo your suke. Make, restore, make whole your suke, your soul, not your spirit. Spirit's born again. It grows. But the soul has to be go through. What does Romans say? Over in Romans chapter 12. It says, be not conformed to this world, be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. So your mind is seated in the soul. Be not, tra be not conformed to this world, be transformed. We're transformed is metamorpho in the Greek. Metamorphosis, just like a, a caterpillar to a butterfly. See, when you're born again, you don't, go, you don't have a metamorphosis. It's a, it's, a, it's a birth. You're born again. You, are, you which were son, you know, uh, Rome, uh, 2 Corinthians 4.21, 4, 4.17. says, if any man, first. 2 Corinthians 5, that's why that, that 4 didn't sound right. That was, that was the other chapter. 2 Corinthians 5, 17 says, Therefore, if any man be in Christ, he's a new creature. He didn't have a metamorphosis. He's born again. I mean, he, he, he became something different. Old things have passed away, all things become new. Verse 18 says, and all things are of God. What's that? Your spirit, your pneuma, has a, has a transformation, a change from one existence to another, from the kingdom of Satan to the kingdom of God's dear son. But the soul has to be renewed. Paul writes, it says, transform your thinking, amen, by the renewing of your mind. Metamorpho, let your mind go through a metamorpho. That takes time. That didn't happen overnight. That's why you're going to meditate in the Word. Why? Because the old way of thinking is when bad stuff happens, you want to respond the way you've been trained to respond in. That is believing that the circumstance is really how it is. Instead of believing that God's Word is higher law than that circumstance. And you come to that place of consistency by renewing your mind. Now, let me say this. You can have faith in your heart and doubt in your head, but you don't want to live that way. You want to get where you're living out of the word of God and your, your mind is renewed and is cooperating with your spirit instead of fighting it all the time. But be, verse, verse 22, but be doers of the word, not hearers only, deceiving your own self. I don't have to do anything but lay on my couch and drink grace daiquiris. I don't have to believe. I don't have to act. I don't have to speak. I don't have to do anything. I just have to know. He says be doers of the word. You've got to act and do and live according to what the word says. For, for he that is a, uh, um, for if any be a hearer, listen, it says here, if you just de do, you don't do, you just hear, you're deceiving yourself. And if any man be a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man beholding his natural face in a glass. He beholdeth himself and goeth his way and straightway forgetteth what manner of man he is or was. 
But whoso looketh into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. This goes back to Joshua 1.8. He'll meditate therein day and night. James says it this way. Whoso looks into the perfect law of liberty and continueth therein. You don't take a glance at the word run off. You don't grab the little card out of the little plastic loaf of bread at the center of the table and it says on the side, our daily bread, and you whip out some scripture, look at it, throw it down, and run out the door, and that's my word for the day. That's not going to cut it. You're going to have to look into the perfect law of liberty and continue therein. Amen. He, who? The one who looks into the perfect law of liberty and continues therein, be not a forgetful hearer. But a doer of the work, this man shall be blessed in his deed, or as the margin says, his doing. He'll be blessed in his doing. Amen. Bill, yeah, you're just loving this, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, that's right. This man will be blessed in his doing. Faith is built out of meditating and feeding on the Word of God so that when circumstances come that's contrary, you go, I operate by a higher law. Yeah, you're saying this, but the Word says this, and I believe God. I, be I love Paul. Remember when he was on the ship and they were, they, were, um, they were cast upon the rocks and the ship was being tossed and they knew that they were in danger of peril of dying? And the angel of the Lord stood by him that night, and he comes up on the deck the next day and goes, Men, the angel, the angel of the Lord stood by me this night and said, Fear not, Paul, for God has spared your life, and not only thine, but all those that are with thee. And he says this, Wherefore I believe God. The circumstances may be shipwreck and destruction, but there is a word from God that will put you over if you will stand up and say, wherefore I believe God. Amen. Hallelujah. That's enough to get up and get off the stool and run around and preach. I can feel it coming. Hallelujah. Yeah. <laughs> Amen. Wherefore I believe God. that it shall be even as he spoke it to me. And it was exactly the way he said it. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. Well, I don't believe that's in the Bible. <sighs> that's why you brought your Bibles. Acts 27, 25. Wherefore, sirs, be of good cheer, for I believe God that it shall be even as it was told me. I'm telling you, when you can look into here, when circumstances of life array themselves against you. Hallelujah. Peter says, wherefore are given to us exceeding great and precious promises that by these we might be partakers of the divine nature. God's a winner. He's the head and not the tail. He is above only and not beneath. And we partake of the, the nature of God. We partake of faith. We partake of victory. We partake of overcoming by the promises of God. The law of faith is greater than the circumstances. So we don't speak denial of the circumstances. We speak the victory that God's word declares. He's more than enough. He is my anchor in the storm. He is my deliverance in the captivity. He is the answer to the unsolvable. He is my healer to sickness. He is my provider to poverty. He is the antithesis to everything Satan brings my way. The opposite. Sorry. It's a big word. I like that word. Everything that Satan brings, every circumstance he stirs up, everything that is arrayed against you, God is the antithesis to it. He's the answer. 
the cloud of despair. He is the glory of hope. In the agony of defeat, he is the exhilaration of victory. And all of that is found in his word. Everything you need, you can find in his word. To put you over the top. Make you a winner. Because you have the spirit of faith. And you speak what you believe. You may have been knocked down, but you're not knocked out. Hallelujah. <laughs> Can somebody say amen? amen? Glory to God. I had fun. We're done. Hallelujah. Anybody get blessed besides me? I, Brother Hagin, you say, I just about preached myself happy. I'm with him. I just about preached myself happy. Hallelujah. Amen. I said amen. Glory to God. Let's receive our offering.